girl with the stars in her eyes.
church even. Wow, this is going to be cool. Are you part of this? Yes. Um, yes, I am. This looks really cool. Really? Yeah. You think so? Look, at it looks wonderful. When does it start? Very, very soon. Oh, good, good, good. Yeah. Should would I have you, a, Would you like to see it? Yeah, I'd love to. Can I? I well, yes. You just got a whole lot of money. <coughs> Pay? I don't have a whole lot of money. Pay with something. <coughs> I can tell a story. Oh. You can pay with a story then. Is that okay? You don't have to hear the story. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> tell me how I do it. I will. Oh. <laughs> uh, let's see. a long time ago. And if I was there then, I wouldn't be here now. If I was there then, I'd have a different story to tell, or maybe I'd have the same story to tell, or maybe I'd have no story at all. Long time ago, before time even began, the moon lived on the earth as if it were another person. It had a place down by the river and it took care of all the grasses and the flowers and the trees that grew there. How am I going? Continue. Thank you. It had a place down by the river and it took care of all the grasses that grew along the banks of the river. But more than anything, the moon loved the evening star. Every night, just after dusk, the moon would come out and he would sing songs the evening star. He wanted the evening star to notice him. He wanted the evening star to care about him. He wanted the evening star to fall in love with him. Where is that guy? I want to know how I'm doing. You're doing wonderfully. Okay. Anyway, what can you do? So the moon, the moon wanted the evening star to fall in love with him, and he would sing these songs. And at first, at first, she didn't care. Some nut standing by the side of the river singing love songs all night long, and besides which, she thought he was kind of goofy. So she just kept on going on her way, not paying him any mind. But after a while, she did find herself thinking about him for time. And after a while, she did start to wonder, I wonder how he's getting along. And after a while, she started to feel like, hey, I'm getting along. And after a while, she made him very happy by really Well, they had the most magnificent wedding, as you can imagine. Everyone came from near and far, and there was dancing, and there was singing, and there was drinking, and there was eating, and people celebrated long into the night. And after a while, the moon and the evening star gave birth to a beautiful baby girl, and they called her Lelia. And the moon loved his daughter Lelia. He took her with her everywhere he went. He even took her hunting. And in time, she became a very good hunter. She learned all about the trapping and the snaring and the shooting and the skidding and the cooking and sneaking up on me from behind the animals. She knew it all. And they were on a hunting trip once when she decided to sit beneath the tree and just kind of take a break, enjoy nature, watch the birds, watch the butterflies. The moon went into a tree to get some fruit for her. And the tree wasn't quite as strong as it looked from the ground. Because when the moon went out on the branch to grab the fruit, the branch broke and fell right on top of Lelia. She fell from where she was sitting. But what was the moon to do? What any father would do, he ran down as fast as he could to make sure his daughter was all right. And when he got close to her, he saw the most frightening thing. 
and the most difficult to understand thing he'd ever seen. Because when he got close to her, he noticed that her eyelids weren't fluttering the way people's eyelids always flutter. He looked at her chest and it looked like she was breathing the way people usually breathe. He put his head on her chest and he couldn't hear her heart beating the way people's hearts usually beat. And a fantastic fear came over the moon. Because for the first time in his life and for the first time in history, he was seeing somebody die. This had never happened before. And the moon didn't know what to make of it. He picked his daughter up in his arms. He carried her into the town. He wanted to find his wife. But when the people saw the moon and his limp daughter walking down the road, the fear came over them. They'd never seen anyone die before. And when the fear came over them, the anger came over them. And they started to yell at the moon, You get out of here! You brought death to us! You get out of here, you death bringer, you murderer! And they chased the moon down to the river, and they chased him into the river, and the moon didn't know how to swim. And his daughter flew out of his arms, and he paddled and tried to keep himself afloat, and the river just carried Delia all the way down to where it feeds into the ocean. And the ocean waves carried her all the way out to where the ocean meets the sky. And when she got to that point where the ocean <coughs> meets the sky, she rose up into the sky. She just floated on the air until she arrived at a point very, very high in the sky. And she became the morning star. was doing everything it knew how to to keep afloat. Nothing was working. Finally, the grasses reached out and said, take a hold of us, we'll pull you in. The moon grabbed the grasses and they pulled them onto the banks. And when he was safe on land again, all he could think about was finding his wife. He walked up the river toward the village, wanting to get to his wife and tell her what had happened. But when the people saw him coming back into the village, they were afraid again, and when they got afraid, they got angry, and they threw things at the moon. They threw rocks and spears and stones at the moon, and the moon just puffed himself up, so he was big and round, and the rocks and the spears and the stones just bounced off the moon, because he was as hard as a rock, and he got larger and larger and larger, and as he grew in size, he lifted off the ground and he floated up into the air. And from his perch above the people's heads, he looked down and he laughed and he said, that's right, I'm dying. And from now on, you're all going to die. Every person is going to die, just like my daughter died. But when you die, you're going to die forever. When I die, I'm just going to die for a little while. And I'm going to come back. And when the grasses die, the grasses are just going to die for a while, and they're going to come back. But people are going to die forever. And he rose up and up and up into the sky until he reached a very high point, way up at the top of the sky. And if you look into the sky on almost any night, you can see the moon there with his daughter Lelia, the morning star. He was right there. And his wife, the evening star, was left. You can see the three of them there to this very day. And that's called How You Pay to Get Into a Theater Show by James McPhee who uh, lived in Cambridge, Massachusetts from 1928 until about a year ago. <laughs> well, sorry I'm late. Well, I was wondering about that. <laughs> oh, I just came from a wedding. Oh, fine. I put my son to bed, and then I, I sang a couple of songs with my, well, actually my daughter. And you were having fun singing at the wedding. Yeah. We were all I'm... waiting for you. Yeah, I know, but here, so here I'm going to sing a song for y'all. You're going to sing a song? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> my my uh, daughter, Marilee. So. Marilee.
girl. Named Merrily. Who lives in a house, very much like your house. In a neighborhood, just like yours. With parents that she considers very poor. <laughs> She has just come home from a trying day with her mother and her relations. Oh, we're from the gate. 
gathering in clouds. I am looking good. <laughs> and I am here to tell all the lady fireflies that may be out there to come out and dance. The night is made for love. Come on, give me the most young and fair. And you that are blooming in your prime. Something in the way she moves. Allow me to introduce myself. I, Muff, and Ricardo, a very sharp dressed firefly. And I'm here to tell <laughs> you, lady fireflies, to come out and dance. Lights and lights and linking lovely the flying from me that we might have to be the way she has to be a dire force in the Oh, well, of course we can. All our speeches can talk, so the girl, you just don't know all of our languages. Come out, come out, wherever you are. <laughs> come and dance with me, boy. We can leave this confusion and all this illusion behind. Just like flies of a feather, a rainbow together will fly. Oh, that's fine. But for tonight, I prefer Barcelona, don't you? Um, something weird is going on. You made a wish upon a sheet star, didn't you? Starlight, star bright. When you wish upon a star. I wish that I could touch the stars. Oh! Yes? Do you know how to touch the stars, Firefly? Oh, no, I, touch, I touch all stars all the time. Really? Yes! Well, usually I fly through their window, land on them, sometimes on the shoulder, sometimes on the ear, or well, often when I land their ears, sometimes I'm doing that. Swamp your own stuff like that. The other day, I flew through the window of Brad Pitt's car while he and I <laughs> No, 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 no stars! Not those stars. The stars in the sky. Oh, oh, well, that's a different matter entirely. Right. Much, much more difficult. No, I don't know how to touch those stars. But I know who does. Who? Who told me? Doctor, who is your single fish? In the pond, of course. He's always such a star. Why don't you ask him? Go downstairs and, and your 
toes fall on the floor, bust out down. Uh huh. That look of familiarity is there in your eye. And then you go to school, and then you go play with your little friend. And then you lose your little friend. Inexplicably. And then you come home, and your puppet done barked on the roof. <laughs> and you go up to your room, and if you look out the window, and it's raining fit to break your heart. And when you feel just so low down, like a dirty dog in the pouring rain, miserable, then you just raise up your voice and you sing, because there ain't nothing else left to do, and you kind of go, Oh, yeah, yeah. Why are you singing? Oh, why am I singing? Really? That's very considerate of you to have. It's like this. I've been hibernating all through the late fall and the winter, and, and I woke up and I feel pretty good right now. I feel rested, and uh, frankly, I am in the mood for love. Look around you, little sister. Look at this pond. You see any lady frogs hanging out this? No, I don't either. They're still asleep in the mud. And that's why I got it. Yeah, uh huh. Just, just, well, try it with me. Sit along with the little amphibian. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's terrible.
I don't know, Kelly, could we sing another song? I think we can. All right, one, two, one more. Hey, 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 mama. Look, little sister. Look into the palm. 
beyond again at the stars, Mary. Look closely this time. Be still and look.
not yet. She will remember me, this young woman will be. As she would. As you do. I object to great. And I for one forever.
inside. It's bedtime. Tomorrow's another day. I had a dream. I think it was all a dream. Mm -hmm. Let me have to tell you about my dream. Okay. There was Ricardo, Firefly, and frogs, and a beautiful bird. And then I climbed the ladder over the ocean. I touched the stars. What a dream! Yeah. <laughs> 